Welcome to this how-to video on how to use the InRank metric. To start with, InRank is a way to measure the on-site popularity of a site's pages based on the Google PageRank algorithm. It calculates the probability that a visitor will visit the page thanks to the site structure created by internal links. This is then expressed on a scale of 0, which is very unpopular, to 10, which is the most visitable page. This influences, as we know, Googlebot visits, visitors, and actually your rank on page. You can find this under summary, links flow, internal popularity. And the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have a segmentation that separates things into page groups that have a meaning for your analysis. On this first graph, we can see how the pages are distributed by depth. This is a graph that you'll also see in the summary tab because it's so important for your site. You can also see the average in rank per depth. And this site has something that I hope yours doesn't, which is a very, very sharp drop in in rank between two and three clicks from the home page, despite the fact that almost all of the pages are after this point. If you want to see which pages are concerned by that particular drop, you can see it here in the page groups by depth. This particular site for this analysis, I've separated my key pages that I want to optimize in yellow and orange and the pages that I want to use to support them in blue and purple. The rest of the pages which I don't want to use in this analysis show up as other, which is all the gray section. So those are the what you're looking at here. You might want to see, okay, we know that that's the depth. Two and three in depth is pretty good, right? Well, what does that mean for in rank, which takes into account not just the space from the home page, but also all of the influence from popularity and links from other sites parts of the site. So if we just look at the orange and yellow pages I want to optimize and switch them to proportional sizes, we can see that I'm not so concerned about 10, 9, and 8, but the 7 pages at an in rank of 2, that's something I really want to look into. Actually, I can click on this to go to the Data Explorer and see exactly which pages are concerned by this particular issue. When I return to my in rank analysis, I can move on to the in-rank flow diagram, which is an interactive diagram and one of my favorites. It shows you how popularity flows from one group to another, which is why the groups are so important here. You can see that yellow and orange accounts for about a third, a little more than a third, of the popularity across the entire site. And there's a lot here that is accounted for by the other pages that I'm not using in my analysis right now. So if I want, I can actually remove their influence from the site and just look at the pages that I want to concentrate on. So we can do that by clicking here. Now there are a few things that we might want to point out. One is the blog, which sends influence to different other groups. However, it accounts for such a small, uh, let me highlight that for you. Uh, the blog is here in blue. It accounts for such a small section of the total site popularity that by the time it sends something, which is a significant part of its own popularity, to the yellow pages, what the yellow pages receive in boost of popularity is so insignificant we can't even see where it arrives. On the other hand, the yellow pages send a far more significant part of their popularity to the orange pages. I'm not sure if that's an interaction we want to preserve, but it's definitely something to look at. One other thing we might want to look at is up in these orange pages, which send their popularity to the case studies, the client case studies. Instead of the client case studies being used to improve the popularity within the site of my key money pages, I'm doing the opposite here. So that's also something I might want to click through and look into. This particular diagram is extremely useful once you know how to use it. So hopefully you've taken something away from there. When we move on to the average in rank by depth, this allows us to separate the different page groups and see how they perform differently with regard to the evolution of the site. Some of these groups I might not be so concerned about. For example, the support resources or the documentation, which ends up with a really insignificant page rank. However, I might want to see if, for example, my key SEO pages are performing in rank wise differently than the average across the site. So that's something I would want to concentrate on. In OnCrawl, one of the things that's great about InRank is that we can also use it 
to look with cross analysis at other factors. For example, in the ranking report, we can see whether or not there's, an inf there's a very strong correlation between um, on SERP rank from Google Search Console and the InRank. And so now it's your turn to see what insights you can gain from InRank. Ready, set, go. See you next time.